Hey guys, what's going on? Jim the Alia. Welcome to the rundown on patch notes 0.2.4.0. This is the patch that's coming up. It's currently not out yet, so we'll have to wait for this patch to come out. But let's first run down what this patch is going to involve. This is one of the big changes in Silly Rav Bath that they give you. You're going to now multi craft gloom stones and imbuements. Imbuements ain't that important. Most people like can hard imbuements pretty easily. It's very rare that you run out of imbuements. Being able to multi craft them is a nice change. It's a quality of life change that is definitely needed. So I'm glad they're going through with it, but it's not something that was desperately needed. Gloom stones, however, you need 30 gloom stones to level up one half of a weapon. A weapon has three boxes, right? And these boxes will be like crit and damage then crit chance, and then, like, ability, so AP, and then, like, defense, right? It takes, they're, they're 30 each. 30 each, right? And you need three of these, because there's gray, blue, and I think it's red. I want to say it's red. Right, so there's these things. So you need 30, 30, 30 for each weapon you want to level up. So you need 90 overall, and you've got to craft them one by one by one. And the problem is, isn't that you craft it one by one, is that you, if especially on, I think it's easier on controller, you hold X, and then it charges up. So there'll just be a little box, you hold X, it's a circle, but I think, and it'll fill the bar up, and then boom, big thing pops up on your screen saying like crafted and then it disappears and then you have to do it again big screen crafted press x goes away and then hold x and then craft go away hold x craft and you'd have to do this 90 times for each singular weapon you wanted to do it's maddening that anyone thought that was a good idea so, I'm glad that they've fucking made it so you can now multi-craft those. Power menu now displaying correct uh, scale power level is good. Uh, for people who don't know what that means, if you went into a dungeon that you were lower as uh, power leveled for and stuff, sometimes it would just show you one. So, like, like for example, your 2,500 uh, power level and went into an old dungeon or hunt or expedition, whatever you want to call them, it would scale you down to like 1,500, right? But sometimes it wasn't showing that. It was still showing you though you're 2,000. Sometimes I saw it was showing like you were like 1,700 when you weren't. It was it wasn't working very well or as intended. So I'm glad they've corrected that. Uh, star bundles. I have no clue about this. I don't really look in the star that much. I only check every now and again just to see what items are in there. I didn't even know they had bundles. So that's interesting. Uh, added a fast travel flyout menu now. I'm going to quickly show you guys what this is so you can see it. So this is the menu that you now get for fast traveling. Instead of you can press triangle and do it the old fashioned way. Go look at the map and figure out where you want to go. Or you can press what looks like L1. Yeah, L1 brings up a fast travel menu and it goes from my, your apartment to Skylands to Highlands to Deepwood Hole. This is a great one, especially now that we're getting another area sooner rather than later. I think before raid is supposed to be when we get the new expedition area that we can free roam in the open world. So, it's going to be a much needed thing to quickly swap between each area. So, I'm glad they've done it this way to the old way. Because in the old way, how it worked was... I'll quickly try and draw it out just to make sure like it makes sense. So, like... Uh, there's, like, the space here is good enough. Uh, you'd have, like, this as the map, right? You would spawn in up here, and then, like, you'd have fast travel here, fast travel here, fast travel here. Uh, one there and one there, right? For example. And... What you would do, I'll take that one away. Uh, what would you do was, if especially if you're on a controller, it was really bad. I'm not really sure about keyboard and mouse. I'm not really a keyboard and mouse player, so I wouldn't know. Uh, you would have to drag it slowly. Like this is how slow it would go. You know, slowly drag it over, and then you could click here and fast travel, and then you'd go into a loading screen. So to have it be able to, uh, even if I'm in, like, let's say this is the Highlands, even if I'm in Highlands, I could bring up a side menu 
and fast travel to my apartment or the highlands or deepwood vault or skylight i could go from any location with a simple menu press is an amazing change and i'm glad they've gone with that uh, the other thing is uh, the character menu is now a new visual eye presentation and I'll go show you guys that now. This is the old menu and this is the new menu. The new menu looks so much nicer, so much sleek, but also hovering over the stats now gives you the exact meaning of what that stat means. So, for example, I've never understood what 2,000 fucking uh, resistance is or, like, 2,000 crit rating, but now it tells you what it exactly equates to, for example, when it comes back around. Uh, it will be like 3,100 crit rating is like 30 something percent critical chance. It's 11 percent critical chance. Same as 2,000 uh, physical defense is like 38 percent physical defense. So on and so forth. It's going to be actually nice to know what we're getting from these stats now. So on and so forth. It just makes life a lot more easier to be able to perfectly understand what our stats are doing within the game. I'm glad they've gone with this. Again, it's just another amazing change that, you know, is making it so that when we get closer and closer to launch, we've got a lot more of a steady, stable understanding of how the game works. So that's how that works. And I'm glad they've went with that. That is definitely cool. The character stats, again, is just an amazing thing. Performance is, I'm not commenting on it. All this section here is kind of like hearsay. I don't know how good the performance and quality modes are going to be. They're saying that performance mode is going to be a near 60 FPS through the whole thing. Like, it's you're barely ever going to drop below 60. Uh, shaders are going to now preload when the game starts. We're supposed to have performance. Uh, further improvements in there. Uh, you know, improvements between loads and how inventory loads. Character menus have been reworked, which we've seen. The game will now default to medium settings, which I'm not really sure how that helps much. Uh, most games nowadays use the automatic, like, we've detected your system and we think you can, like... Your system says you can use high or whatever. Or like your system says you can use low. And like that's just automatically what it sets it to. Apparently this game doesn't have that. Which I thought it did at launch. But I guess it doesn't. So it's just going to automatically put you to medium. It's not going to affect people who've already started the game up. This is only for people who start the game for the first time. Fair enough. This one's interesting as well. Because uh, this I'm not really sure about. I have, it, it, it seems to be true. The amount of times like... Uh, I've snapped someone that isn't on screen that shouldn't be targetable over an enemy that's on target but further away from me is weird as fuck. So, for example, I think this is what this is saying. Uh, so, if I'm stood here, got my little spitty sword and whatnot, I'm ready to go to war, right? I'm ready to go to war. There's a guy in front of me, but like he's all the way over here. So, like, he's a bit of a distance from me, but there's a guy right behind me. That I can't see yet, but he's he's ready to go. He's ready to gun for me, right? My whole game will turn me around from this side all the way to this side, and it just instantly throws me through a loop every time, and I don't like it. If that's what this is changing from what I'm reading, uh, responsive to the direction of the player's inputting should reduce cases where nearby but off-target enemies are selected over enemies on target but further away. Uh, if that's what it's supposed to be doing, then I hope it does work, because that current system really fucking pisses me off. Art of War passives now stack proper War Masters. This isn't something I know slash care about. I don't play War Masters, but I might in the future, so this is a nice change overall, and I'm glad they're fixing this. Uh, healing effects from Blood Song Weapon Ability Wheel of Pain. That's just a bug that's been fixed. Uh, another bug, this one was only scaling with entirely web ability power. It's now being scaling with both. I'm still on the stance that they're fucking this up completely with weapon of powers. Now, hear me out. There's two ways they should be doing this, and I'm going to lay them out right now for you. They should do it one of two ways. You could do adaptive scaling. You could do adaptive scaling. That's not a D. Wait a minute. That's a D. We could do adaptive scaling. So whatever your highest stat is, being AP or AD... It would just scale with it instead. So if you had, let's say, for example, seeming it's down there, we have Hellswarm, right? Hellswarm uses a big circle that fires little fucking firebombs in it. No matter what it does, it should either scale with AP or AD, depending on what your highest stat is. Whatever your highest stat is, it should just pick one of the two. That's one way to do it. 
keeping Hellswarm as an example, though, uh, is very, to me, an AP, like, mage-type weapon. It is a fire shotgun that is using fire bullets to do damage, and its ability literally makes a magic ring of fire that sends chunks of fucking meteors down, right? Very ability power, so it's just scale of AP. Something like, uh, Blood Song, is it called? It's here somewhere. Uh, momentum. Da, 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 da. I don't know what it's called. But there's one that does three attacks in a row. Like Gladiator Slice, which gives one star. Gladiator Slice, for example, is one where you just you have a giant fucking great sword. Uh, you have a giant great sword and you swing it three different ways, right? You just go swoosh, swoosh, swoosh in three different combos. That is very AD. Should be an AD ability. That's another way you could do it. Balancing it as they scale 50-50, so it's a 50-50 with AD, AD and AP is just really bad. It's a really bad way of doing this. Some weapon abilities have been hit much harder than others with this. It just doesn't work, and it just doesn't feel right. You either, either, the best way to do it is literally just make it adaptive and have it scale whatever their best stat is. Personally, that's the best way to do it. The only problem with adaptive scaling is, as is a player, I think it's the best decision, right? I think as a player, I think it's going to be better for APs and ADs if we just get a choice, right? The problem is, as a developer, I, d I don't know how easy that is. I don't know how easy it is to make the game pick up which is the best stat. I don't know how it picks up, like, any of that. I have no clue how branching paths are easy to develop. As a developer, I have no school clue how much of, like, a balance nightmare that becomes like i have no clue how any of that works so as a player like that shit sounds so good to me as a player adaptive scaling sounds like the best option you have as a dev that might just sound like hell i haven't got a clue not a dev i don't know developer stuff i just play games but as a player adaptive scaling does seem to be like the best route you could go here if we're just going to 50-50 it, which I think 50-50ing it is a terrible idea. Uh, yeah, I think we need to we need to look at this as a whole. With these fixing and stuff, it's, I just feel like I haven't seen anyone say good things about the scaling changes so far. It hasn't improved AP builds enough, and it's ruined some weapons physical builds that we need to really... This, 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 this whole issue with weapon and ability power needs to be looked into at some point. Definitely if you ask me before raids, but that's just me, I guess. Hellswarm! This is something that's been a long time coming. This is generally my favorite shotgun aesthetically and weapon power wise. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this change works because they've tried once already this one was a big change that needed to happen i don't know why this wasn't in so because so, so currently to my knowledge if i remember correctly uh for example there's only two shotguns in the game there's tempest and then there's hellswarm right and tempest right now just outperforms it its damage is higher its ability is better its ability just does so much more uh, damage, its ability is better, its damage is better, and its echo placements are just better as well. And I don't know why. I don't know why I spell echo with an A. Echo. Its echo placement is better. Tempest has not, Hell Swarm just has nothing going for it as a shotgun at the moment. I even think this one's better in the brake power department. The whole thing around this weapon right now is it sucks. And it sucks because of how its weapon power works. It's very inconsistent. If anyone remembers old GPL, will know what I mean when I say this. Old GPL in League of Legends used to work as a big circle you'd put down. And then it would periodically send bolts down. Like big cannons would go down like this, 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 this. But they would come down periodically. So one, two, three, four five would be like the round they went down in and it, you you could literally stand in it and not be hit by a single one right i'm pretty sure that's how old gp used to work that's how hell swarm used to uh, works currently there's a big circle that you fire up you fire a little ball into the sky and it lends a sickle down and big 
I would say medium sized meat yards fall down in a random order in a random placement. So there's a chance you don't deal any damage to anyone. And that's it, just a bad model. Right now with these changes, it'll now fire five for each stack. So you can have five, 10 and 15 meteors coming down. The area has been reduced, uh, but the blast radius has been increased. So there's bigger ones making it. So the area has been reduced, but the cannons that it's firing, like the meteors are bigger and they do more damage. And they also uh, drop 150% faster. So they fall faster right with the trade-off being the area is just smaller but the area needs to be smaller because it's just struggling to do damage to certain enemies the idea now instead of it being like this big aoe uh, damaging ability it's going to be a smaller aoe ability that damages less enemies but deals more damage and guarantees damage to the enemies in it so for example the old meteor thing could have been like this big and it could have had this many enemies in it for example and it would do this and it would only hit like a few and it wouldn't hit them for most for most of them but what you will do now is you'll have a smaller area so some people will be outside but the few people that are inside are going to guaranteed get hit is pretty much the general consensus now i'm gonna i'm gonna try and use it i want to see how good it is on bosses right now it, like i said it just pales in comparison what the tempest can do the general consensus for me is is this is definitely going to help being able to lose some tankiness for weapon power as everyone with shotguns wants to be able to do we're just here for break power and damage don't really care about resistances so it's going to be interesting the other thing i've noticed that they've changed is this thing tooth and claw the weapon i'm currently using i'm thinking about God damn it, thinking about using as a permanent ability uh had two problems because i use silo I had a problem where it was bouncing off the clone for some reason. But this fucking thing was like the biggest problem ever. You could stand there. Got your sword. You got your shield. You got your little stupid smile on your face as you're going to war. The guy could literally be here. Just fucking having... Showing his little muscles off. Flexing in front of you. You'd throw your shield. One or two things have happened. You'd throw it and go straight for him. Or you'd throw it, and for some reason it would go above him. And I've never understood why. You could be locked onto him. You you couldn't be locked onto him. You could free sit. You could do a full 360 no scope and try and hit him. The shit would just fucking fling through him or over him. I I'm so happy they fixed this, dude. It was so fucking terrible that you'd having to deal with this. And also, I never used the clone a lot, so I didn't notice this bug. But I'm glad they fixed that though. So the last part of the patch notes that matters because bug fixes we don't go over. They do bug fixes every single patch. And it's normally one of the biggest part of the patch notes. They fix so much stuff when it comes to bug fixes. So I'm not going to sit there and try and show you all the bug fixes that come through. Just general bug fixes and stuff. If you want to see the bug fixes, I like it's always linked in the bottom. Because it's the best place if you want to be part of the community and find out what's going on. The Discord is always linked in the bottom. If you want to go see the patch notes yourself, just go there. Join the Discord, go into the patch notes, and it's right there. And you can see all the big fixes yourself. I'm just here to go over the big points and whatnot. So, Echoes. This is good. Beastmaster Echo, which is a cool... There's a cool boss echo that you can get, which has one of... You can get one of three options. Uh, you have, for example, the two that they show is the Chill Vulture, which I don't really remember what he does. I think he's the one that, like, sends out, like, the little ray of ice, like that, and it slows and dots the enemies, and they've buffed the dot. There's... I don't remember what the third one is. There's the bear, and the bear just kind of, like, slams the ground. He comes out and goes, Raw! Raw! I can't draw a bear, but he goes, Raw! And he, he slams the floor. That looks like a turtle. <laughs> he slams the floor. It does uh, break damage. And yeah, they've increased that by 150%. I'm glad they've done that. It felt really weak compared to other echoes that are currently in the game. And that is fine. Uh, the Grand Deceiver echo will now only trigger if enemies are closed and pull into the vortex. Don't know what his echo is, so I can't tell you about that. Same as this guy. I don't know his echo very much off bat. But I can see that uh, they've made a good change on it, where it is now charges during its cooldown. So once it's once it's back up, you can just instantly proc it, which is always nice. Added power rating for Anubis and Plunderfoot Echoes, which is just really weird. 
assuming they don't so i think some of them don't work anymore but it's interesting this is this is weird now so Reaver Woods Lost Zones now have bespoke encounters. I don't know what bespokes are, but that's interesting. Shrouded Woods will have a lot more beast encounters, which is nice. Bone Archer will feed more ravers encountered. Hollowed Heart will feed more hollowed ones. The Willow's Witch Cross Storm speed up reduced. Don't know what that is. And the Willow Witch Cross Storm damage reduced by half per tick. I don't really know any of this meaning. Uh, I can't remember what the Willow Witch is. If the Willow Witch is the one with the little uh, spooky things that like connect with each other, I think this is a poor drawing of what I'm trying to get through. The totems and they have a connecting line and stuff. If that's the Willow Witch, then that, yeah. If it's the one I'm actually thinking of now that I've read Pro Storm, it's the fucking bitch with the stick. It's this bitch. She like she's a fucking giant armus. And she just stands there with a stupid stick. And she just makes multiple copies of herself. She just makes, like, multiple ones. And then she sends the crow storm when she stands on a stick. It's this bitch. And they've reduced the speed and damage per tick. Because on the higher, like, on, on the higher ones, like, plus four, that shit, when it gets on you, if you don't, if you're not able to move, if you've run out of stamina, whatever reason, you're just dead. It's just a flat line. You go from 100 to 0 instantly if those crows get on you on the higher tiers with very little defense, like a silo or venomous or anything like that. You're just dead. There's no chance of you surviving that. It's. I'm so glad they've changed that. I've just realized who this is, and I'm fucking so happy. Heart Ripper should now spawn with the crack amount of HP. Snowlings will no longer default into fleeing behavior. This has been an issue for a while now. I'm glad they've changed that. Ice Lancers in the Highlands have been increased to level 20. And added an additional loot island to hidden heroic mode of gloom tears in the highlands. Ooh. Ooh, I might have to go try that at some point. See. This is this is a big good change. Because I've said for a while now that one of the problems um, we find are struggling with is that it's all in the expeditions. It's all in the expeditions and it's all in the hunts. There's a big open world. In the Highlands, you start there, and there's some stuff over there, and there's literally, except from like little walls here, there, and like thingy, all of this has stuff in it. There's even a world boss like down here, and a world boss over here, and he's worth doing. He's not really worth doing unless you need the item. He doesn't really give many items, but uh, he's easier to spawn in, right? He's an annoying piece of shit to spawn in. He spawns in every two hours. But with this, depending what the loot is, initial loot island to hidden heroic mode, gloom tears, and the highlands. Depending what that loot is, I'm going to have to go try that out. If it's good loot, if it's, uh, like, for example, if it's uh, coins, uh, gloom stones would be a good one. Gloom stones, uh, uncrafted and crafted ones anything gloom related would be nice imbuements would be a good one imbuements uh i can't really think of anything else because you don't want trickster keys i guess would be a decent one get some trickster stuff tricks i don't know why i'm spelling like that but yeah tricks tricks the stuff uh, i can't really think of anything else you would want it can't give you help or coins or anything like that it'll be too broken so I'll have to try that out as soon as I can. This is the big one. Accessory drop rates in large chests have been turned from 1 to 6 to 1 to 3. That's huge. Uh, epic accessories and boss has been increased. You're no longer going to get an accessory every time you do a boss, pretty much. It's now been reduced to 60% for the normal ones and 40% from 8.5 to get an epic. So, I think this is a sign to me, at least. This whole thing here is a sign to me. That in raid we're going higher than epic the raid is going to bring legendaries like and dairy stuff in that's what's good. raid is bringing in that stuff if we're increasing it by this much we've got to be getting newer stuff from raid which going legendary even maybe even higher and go to sets or like we already got like sets but you know what i mean like an actual set piece uh i don't know what you'd plug in like fucking notorious i guess i could call them that like notorious or like ubers or ancients chants 
Like, we're going legendary, and then we've got to go one more higher, in my mind. I, sw I swear, Wayfinder DB, which I'll just go check real quick on my other monitor. Oh, that was not what I wanted. Has something already in the accessories thing. Yeah, it has legendary, and then it has uniques. So, we might be going to uniques soon. But raid is definitely open us to legendary if we're getting this big of a, uh, you know, getting that big of an increase. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, consumables have been added to the loot table. It's good because I've never crafted, uh, uh, what do you call I've never crafted stuff like consumables. They've always been like such a thing I don't want to craft. Especially since the change where they actually consumes it now. Uh, what it used to do, and I think this was a bug, so let's say, for example, you can hold two potions, and you can have, like, five, that's a seven, and a five, right? Seven and five, if you use one, go down to six, use one, go down to four, then next, uh, next time you go back in, you would have seven and five still, it didn't take it away. But, if you used another one, for example, and then instead it went from seven to four, and from five to, like, two... The next time you went into a dungeon or expedition, you would have four and two. So the change came through now where no matter what you do, even if you go um, six and four, the next time you go into a raid or uh, expedition or hunt, it will be six and four. And I don't use potions now because of this, because it's not worth fucking constantly crafting potions for a little bit of xp bonus and stats i'm gonna save all that for when raids come out because raids normally in games like this is when you want to be popping consumables with limited amounts of them so that's when i'll be doing that and i won't be doing it any sooner so being able to grind consumables instead of crafting them depending which ones drop will be interesting a metal bell trinket to the helper coin shop. Don't know what that is. And, uh, yeah. And then last but not least, added an invulnerability that is applied to players only during full dialogue takeovers. I guess there was a problem where you could have like fire tick on you something and you'd just uh, die while talking to characters and stuff. And that's about it. That is the full patch notes. I think I went through everything. I don't think I missed anything. Uh... I think I generally hit all the notes, and then there's all the bug fixes, and you can see there is a lot of them. They're not just a small number of bug fixes. There is a lot that has been fixed within this game. Slowly but steadily, we are getting ready for a full release. I'm calling it now. I'm saying first raid is about, I'm going to say, two months from launch. I think when we get uh, raids, we are one, we are one to two months away from launch. So we've still got to get through to mythic hunts, mounts, a new area, then raids, and then we are pretty much ready for launch with all the bug fixes and changes in between. Please, 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 airships and the kids, just think about the idea of adap adaptive uh, damage, please. Uh, so it's just either AP, RAD on the abilities just have just just have a just have a little think about it that's all i ask just just have a little think have a play around with it it may you may come out that it's like it's pointless it doesn't do anything it ruins the game it just seems like the perfect fix for me right now where we stand on the weapons where a fucking ad and ap 50 50 split is currently at it just seems like a nightmare in the future and especially when more AP characters come in, it feels like it's going to reduce their impact a lot when they could have 100% and be more strong because of it. And all the AD people who are currently running away with the game can continue to stay up to date with the APs and stuff. It just feels like a balancing nightmare you're causing yourself by splitting the damage. I don't know though. Like I said, I'm a player, not a dev, so I don't really know the uh, ins and outs on that. Anyway, that is patch 0 0.2, 0.4, That was Wayfinder Wednesday, episode 21. Uh, thank you guys for coming and popping over. Uh, we'll see you guys next Wednesday when I'll probably be grinding some stuff in the game with all these changes and stuff, trying out Hellswarm, looking at the... Uh, oh, that is just stuck on the screen. And trying out the heroic uh, gloom tiers to see what the uh, island is. Except from that, there's not much else I can really do. Uh, I want to see what the performance is like. I want to try out Hellswarm now that they're changing this again. 
And last but not least, there is the additional loot in the heroic mode of Gloom Tears. And then after that, there's not much really changes. This is going to be easy to grind the specific echoes you want. And then everything else is just a nice change in between. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.